Welcome to Oceans of Possibility Summer Reading for the week of July 31st, 2022 for the Elementary School Group, Part 1. Pirate Girl by Cornelia Funke, illustrated by Kirsten Meyer. Captain Firebeard was the terror of the high seas. His ship, the Horrible Haddock, sailed faster than the wind over the waves. Whenever the Horrible Haddock appeared on the horizon, the knees of honest seafaring folk would shake like jelly. Captain Firebeard had a fearsome crew. His helmsman was Morgan O'Meany. His cook was Cutlass Tom, Bill the Bald, Willie Woodenhand, Crooked Carl, and 20 more terrible pirates just like them made up the rest of the motley bunch. When Firebeard's crew boarded a ship, nothing was safe. They stole the silver spoons and the captain's uniform. They stole the ship's figurehead, the pots and pans, the hammocks, and all the sails. And of course, they stole all the casks of rum. But one day, Firebeard robbed a ship that he really should have left alone. On board was a little girl named Molly. Molly was off on a trip to see her grandma. The pirates leaped on board with an ear-splitting roar. Molly tried hiding among the ropes, but Morgan O'Meany soon fished her out. What shall we do with her? He said with a smirk. Take her with us, you fool, bellowed Firebeard. Her parents will pay a handsome ransom for such a little treasure. And if not, then we'll feed her to the sharks. You'll be sorry for this, cried Molly. But Morgan O'Meany rolled her up like a herring and tossed her on board the horrible haddock. When the sun had gone down, Bill the Bald dragged Molly to see the captain. All right, tell me your parents' names and address. Or else, growled Captain Firebeard. Will not, Molly growled back. If I told you my mother's name, you'd be so scared you'd cry like a baby. At this, all the pirates howled with laughter. So Molly was put to work. She peeled potatoes and cleaned boots. She polished cutlasses, patched sails, and scrubbed the deck. Soon, every bone in her body ached. Three times a day, Firebeard asked her, Name and address? But Molly just smiled. Feed her to the sharks, roared Willie Woodenhand. But Firebeard ground his teeth and said, She'll talk before long. Every night the pirates had a party. They drank rum, staggered across the deck, danced on the ship's rigging, and bawled out the rudest songs. But Molly had a plan. While the pirates were carousing, she wrote secret messages and popped them into empty bottles. When the pirates were safely snoring in their bunks, she tossed the bottles into the sea. Molly did this every night. One night the pirates partied until dawn, but this time they fell asleep on the deck. Molly tiptoed across the tangle of arms and legs and threw her bottle over the ship's rail. Splish, splash, it landed in the deep, wide sea. Hey, what was that? yelled Morgan O'Meany. The pirates staggered over to the rail. It's a message in a bottle, they all cried. Bring it to me, shouted Captain Firebeard. Now! The pirates dived to the bottom of the sea. They searched and searched, but Molly's message had bobbed away. Soaking wet, they crawled back on the deck, cursing. Tell me what you wrote, demanded Captain Firebeard, but Molly just kicked at his wooden leg. Firebeard turned red as a lobster. Now it's time to feed her to the sharks, he roared, but a cry from above stopped him. P-p-p-pirates, shouted Ten Pint Ted from the crow's nest. Nonsense, scoffed Firebeard. We are the only pirates around here. But he was wrong. A ship with red sails was speeding towards them. A giant black flag with a skull and crossbones fluttered from its mast. Who in the name of Neptune's beard is that? stuttered Firebeard. That's my mom, Molly grinned. It's Barbara's Bertha herself, wailed the crew of the horrible haddock. Firebeard turned white as a sheet, and his pirates rolled their eyes in fear. This time it was their knees that were shaking, and Bill the Bald's fake teeth almost flew out of his mouth. The ship with the red sails drew closer and closer. Barbarous Bertha stood at the prow, swinging at her cutlass. Wait until she sees my hand, said Molly. They're red and we're off from peeling potatoes. That will make my mom maddest of all. Firebeard and his pirates groaned with terror. Soon, Barbarous Bertha was alongside the horrible haddock. Her ferocious crew swung themselves over the rail with a terrible roar. 
We are here at last, my pirate girl, cried Barbarous Bertha, throwing Molly high into the air. We got your message. Your grandma was beginning to wonder where you were. Now, how nasty can we be to these piratical nincompoops? Well, said Molly, that's easy. From that day on, Captain Firebeard and his pirate crew had no time to think about raiding ships. Willie Woodenhand scrubbed the deck. Morgan O'Meany and Cutlass Tom peeled vegetables from morning until night. Captain Firebeard polished Barbarous Bertha's boots 14 times a week, and Molly was finally able to visit her grandma. The end. We're going to make a little telescope, just like the pirates used to see land far away. Um, so what you'll need is your craft kit. You'll have a telescope. See how it pulls out all the way. So it slides out. Um, and then you'll have stickers. Um, you should have plenty for your telescope. Um, I only put one kind of mine, but there are two different kinds. There's also skull and bones ones, but I knew I wanted the little characters. So what you're gonna need is crayons, markers, or paint. I'm gonna use crayons on mine, and I'm just gonna go ahead and color it. Um, I'm gonna color the outside parts black, just because I want to. the rest different colors. Um, I think I'm gonna make mine rainbow. I know that you guys have seen me make lots of rainbow stuff. But I really like rainbows. They make me happy. So I'm gonna go ahead and color this. Um, you guys don't need to watch me color. You know how to color. Um, and then I'll show you how it looks when it's done. So I'm all done coloring it. Um, like I said, I did rainbow and then push it all the way in. Make sure you pull it all the way out when you color it so you don't miss parts of it. That's how I did it. Um, and then I'm just gonna put a few stickers here and there just to, just to decorate it, make it cute. put them anywhere you want just don't put them over the lenses or else you won't be able to see through it um, but like I said there should be more than enough stickers for you um, oops sorry it's gonna ring four times guys <laughs> I told you I try to make sure that it's not on the hour or the half hour but sometimes I forget I get too excited about what I'm doing um, I'm not going to put any stickers on this part just because they're too wide. They won't fit on there. I want to make sure it still closes. And if it overlaps, it won't close. But yeah, I'm just sticking stickers all over. Just to look cutish. And you should have stickers left over. There should be plenty. Um, so that's about it. Um, I saw stickers left over. Thank you.